Hi and welcome back to Airborne Filming. This is the long-awaited installation video of the Zenmoose H3 3D Gimbal. In the description I'll add the link for balancing the centre of gravity as uh, the camera on the front can counterbalance so the battery is important to be positioned correctly. So first of all going to have to start by removing the battery. You can see that I've got it placed at the top rear which will be explained in the other video. And we're going to need to remove the top plate so you'll need your hex screwdriver as well. But I find it's a lot quicker to put it in the end of a drill on the lowest torque setting so that it won't damage the screw threads but it does speed up the process somewhat for taking the screws out. So with some level of care that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to systematically take the screws out, keep them in one place and have the top removed. Now if you don't have a landing gear already, this is the one that I used that I bought from eBay under £18 as I described in my other video. Now this is what you're going to use to mount the Zenmoose gimbal on the front which holds the camera and doubles as the landing gear as well which gives a lot more clearance from the ground than the standard DJI legs. So with this kit comes some plates as shown here which you're going to use to mount the landing gear to the undercarriage of the craft. Now for the minimal weight that it would add, I've used some fairly robust bolts here to come through the bottom plate of the DJI through the plates on a landing gear secured with these bolts. I may trim the bolts back, but for now they offer a very robust attachment for the landing gear to the DJI, so I'm confident that it won't come apart. Here is the inside of the DJI, the bottom plate, where you can see I've used a piece of strong plastic to distribute the weight and I've put the bolts through it so obviously I've made holes there so the bolts go through there into the plates on the landing gear securing them fairly firmly and I've done the same on the other half as you can see under the equipment there. So here's the plate that actually holds the gimbal itself. Now you'll see the center hole with the silver motor in the middle. That was already cut out so that's fine, that's shown here. But the four screws you can see here, they, they were not for appropriate holes for these to go through. So I had to mark them off by with a pencil and actually draw those holes myself. But that didn't take too long. And the assemble of the gimbal itself is fairly straightforward. You choose the cushioning pads here and you connect the two plates of the gimbal together. And then that can be screwed to this top plate that came with the landing gear. So the assembly of the gimbal itself is very straightforward, but connecting that to the plate just took a little bit of work with the holes to get the holes in the right place. And then it's ready to mount onto the landing gear. So having installed the landing gear, you end up with these two prongs sticking forward. So make sure they stick far enough forward so that you can keep the propellers out of view with the camera. Uh, that can take a little bit of um, playing around, but that's usually fine. Then you attach these four shock absorbing rings onto the top plate as well. Now you can see here they are quite a tight fit, but they will take some easing on and they will push backwards. Uh, try to keep them in line because if they don't line up properly, then uh, it can be quite difficult to move them later on. So if you try to keep them square as you go, that's an easier way, especially since you get two in a line with each other. So if you line them up, get them pushed back gradually and keep them in line. It helps to keep them slightly loose rather than tight so that they get a little bit of play so that they will move about so you can get them on. So you'll ease those back, just back far enough so that you're comfortable it's not going to come off. Now you can see on the left there is um, what I call magic string or nylon that they often use for clothing. This is incredibly strong material which uh, I've just tied on as a safety precaution. You could hold a couple of kilograms with this wire without it breaking. So I've attached that to one of the arms just as a safety precaution to prevent it from falling if uh, there was any problem with the landing gear. So now with the gimbal in place, you'll see from the back, the only thing left to do is to connect it up. You can see there's a plug here and this black flat connector will plug into the back and this wire will come back and I'm actually going to attach it to one of the legs to keep it out of the way. The electronics for the gimbal are quite straightforward. The left hand side has a power cable coming out to connect the battery terminal, the same place you connect the NASA in exactly the same way, just a plus and a minus. You can see the Gorilla Glue that I've got covering the whole connection to stop shorting, but that just connects there in exactly the same way as the battery terminal. 
On the right hand side you've got the flat black connector which as you saw connects to the back of the gimbal. This is feeding the instructions down into the gimbal. You can also see that I've used a uh, heat shrink tubing for the wires just to keep them still as well and to prevent chafing. You also get another DJI cable which is going to connect it to the NASA. Now the NASA control unit remember has the power cable and it has the GPS connector and it has the connector here going into the motor controllers. So the only one left is this one on the side here which is where you're going to connect this. So very straightforward you just clip this into place as it's the only, it's the only place it's going to fit and then you're going to connect the other side straight into the gimbal. So I've had to find another place for this to sit so I've just put some more velcro on the bottom of the gimbal control unit and I've just put it just off to one side from the NASA so they sit next to each other. So these velcro strips are very useful, they keep things in the same place, they keep them still. So I'm just going to connect this from the NASA straight into the uh, Zenmoose control system into the side there. Now the other one you see to the left is a USB connector. That's for calibrating the gimbal, but you won't need to do that because it comes calibrated right out of the box. And that's it, the power cable and the connection to the NASA. Obviously now we want to connect the camera. So this is obviously with the GoPro camera. You can see the arm that comes across the front, so we'll just run through this very quickly. We'll take the same hex screw, so it's exactly the same size. You're just going to remove the two screws from the uh, back of the arm here. And then you'll find that the GoPro sits very snugly on the inside here. It just sits inside the rim. So get the screws ready and hold the arm in place, turn it over, reattach the screws, and you'll find that it's very snug and easy to attach in place. You'll find also the gimbal comes with this little power connector that you plug into the side of the GoPro so that it keeps it charged. You don't have to worry about the battery. Now you might worry about the lens of the GoPro. That's where this comes in. It was literally about 80 pence off Amazon or something like that, delivered from China. Perfectly clear, transparent lens protector. So this fits very snugly over the front of the lens of the GoPro, just so that if you fly into any trees or anything else, you haven't got to worry about scratching the lens of the GoPro. And obviously I fully recommend getting this as well. So finally, for the balancing of the battery against the camera at the front, obviously you've got the battery connector at the back, so I'm going to take this top pad, again the trusty velcro comes in to hold the battery in place. Um, I've got these screws with the little washers that I'm going to put through the top of this plate. Now I'm going to mount the battery directly on top and to the rear of the DJI which is going to counterbalance the battery. Some people like to hang it underneath, I'm just a little bit more reassured by putting it on the top so that it's uh, not going to fall if I'm zipping about quite a bit. So I'm going to put these other screws in first uh, at the rear of the uh, top plate as you can see here but then I'm going to attach the plate for the battery by putting it through the plate and directly into the DJI plate, top plate itself, that's going to hold this in place. So you may just want to check the counterbalance as I describe in more detail in the other video, uh, just to make sure you've got the battery and the gimbal camera balanced evenly. It won't be perfect, but as close as you can get it to the center of gravity, the less trouble you'll have flying around. And that really is it. Now remember you can also configure the camera to uh, swivel and look downwards like this and that's done by configuring the dial as shown here to make the camera look down but I'm going to cover that in a separate video. Thanks again for watching Airborne Filming. I know there's a lot of detail but if there are any questions please just drop them in the comments and I will come back to you. And please do subscribe and like if you found this video useful. Thank you.